what's going on beautiful people today we're going to be doing a like really really i was going to say low tech but it's actually no tech no technology at all in this vase here that i got from ikea i was just walking past it and thought oh that's interesting i quite like the shape of that i'm going to go for something so the reason it's no tech at all is because this vase will have no i shouldn't say no water in it i mean it'll, it will have water in it it'll have no filter in it and it'll have no lighting direct source lighting it'll have the ambient light like from your home or in your office or something like that. Now I have done no tech tanks before, which is like this one here, this one here, this one above it. This one here as well with my amazing better. Hello buddy, what are you doing? What are you doing in there? <laughs> yeah, this one's kind of, it's got no filter or anything, but it does have a light. But for this vase, we're going for no light at all, nothing, just the vase. But we do need a nutrient system for the plants that's gonna go in. The plants will keep the water like super clear and it means that the inhabitants will have like microorganisms and everything like that. It's gonna be a tiny little ecosystem basically that you do nothing to apart from watch and enjoy. Okay, but what is an ecosystem? So an ecosystem is anything that contains like a bubble of life. Now you get closed ecosystems and open ecosystems. I think I just made up open ecosystems, but it works. Basically with what we're gonna set up here, I will very rarely have to like do anything to it at all. The water will obviously evaporate, so I'm topping that up. So that's my interaction. But in terms of feeding, very, very minimal because the inhabitants, the shrimp and the snail, they will eat the degrading plant matter and things like that that we're going to be putting in the tank and also very occasionally I'll just put a little sprinkle of food as well so minimal input and no tech oh I hate these stickers so much so we need to supply nutrients to the plant roots at the bottom of the vase. So first of all, I'm gonna stick in some Nutribase. This stuff contains like live bacteria or dormant bacteria. It's got like crushed lava rock and all sorts of nutrients in there that'll just start us off really well. Now we don't need a huge amount of it. Just a couple of scoops, flatten it out. And then on top of that, I've got some premium aquatic soil. So it's aquatic pond soil. It's already had a lot of the organics removed and all we're left with is the nutrients that will just stay sunk underwater. We'll cap it as well, but these will supply long-term nutrients to the plant roots and just ensure that everything grows great. Again, just a couple of scoops of this stuff. And we want to remove any clumps as well, just break them up. And then I'm going to mix that all in with the gravel as well. Stops it all compacting and going a bit like funky. I'm also gonna add in some root tabs just to bolster this all up for extra long-term nutrients. And the method I'm using here is one that I've used on all of my tanks. And as you can see, <laughs> my plants just grow nuts. Just push them down a little bit the roots will actually find the highest sort of nutrient areas anyway. And then give that all a little spray down. So I'm gonna go with play sand. Now the reason for that is I like the grain size. Have a look at that. So it's rather fine. Uh, and it acts so good as a capping layer, it just locks everything down. Now we want to put about an inch of the play sand on top. Some people say that you should put a couple of inches, I just don't think that's necessary. Everything in this vase is designed for aquatic use. And if a little bit comes through the sand, it, it won't hurt at all, but it should stay locked down anyway. And we just flatten all that down and press it in a little bit. Make sure it's like nice and even all the way around. Just for presentation, really. It doesn't have to be. Which is proving harder than I thought. <laughs> Give it another little spray just to tidy up those edges. Now that is the basis for our ecosystem. That's where all the work will be doing. Well, no, the plants, leaves as well, but predominantly we've got bacteria colonization. We're gonna have nutrients for all of the roots as well, and it's gonna be awesome. But now we need to put our plants in. So this is my two foot aquarium racking sort of system. And down here is where I keep a load of plants. Now you can see they're all dry and they're just sat in a little like inch of water. That means the roots in the bottom in the baskets can take up the water, keep them fresh, but 
you don't have to maintain another planted tank. So at the back here, we've got some Echinodorus with these big leaves, and some of them are growing up really tall. So I think if I put those in the vase, they'll be coming out the top, and they're already used to being out of the water, the top parts as well. So they'll continue to grow out, and it should look great. So here is the plant that we're gonna use. Echinodorus decumbens <laughs> from Aquafleur. So it's got these awesome shoots that come all the way up, and they're very, very rigid, which means when we place it inside the vase, they're all gonna come out the top like that. And just look at the roots that have grown out in that plant grow out tank. Really, really healthy. So we want to remove a lot of the rock wall, as much as you can. You can use your hands, but to get into the nitty gritty of the roots, I like to use a fork. Just be gentle, you don't want to damage the whole root systems. The base of the plant can be quite delicate. Just take your time. Now, although that root system is absolutely great, we want to cut it about here because we want new roots to grow out of those cut points and just go right down into our nutrient system. Now you can use tweezers for this bit, but I find it's easier just to make a hole with your finger. And then place the plant in the hole, push the sand back around it, sort of locking it all in. Look at that, all coming up the top, looking perfect. You could just leave it like that, to be honest, but I feel like we need more because it's just gonna keep that water quality even, even better. So a couple of little pebbles down the bottom here for some decoration. Again, you don't have to do that, but I just feel like I want to. I've got these nice rounded black ones. Maybe place one behind it and one just in front. The contrast works really well, I find, with the sand, with the dark pebbles, you know, the light sand, yeah, it's cool. And then this tank right here is what I class as one of my farm tanks, like a plant farm tank. And I'm gonna be using this plant here. It's similar to Dwarf Sag, but it's not. It's actually, I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put it up on the screen now. It sort of sends runners out like this to propagate itself. It's kind of taken over. So I'm gonna steal some of the nicest little bits and place those in the vase. <laughs> they really do creep as well. Look, that's all one piece going all the way around. It was just tangled all around the tank. It all come up together. It's starting to take over, so I don't mind that. Now, all you've got to do is just break the chain either side of the plant. So there and there, and now I've got a plant. I'll take off some of the rougher leaves, and then you're left with something beautiful. And then it's just a case of planting them into the sand. Okay, that's looking great. We can now fill up the vase with water, but slowly, because we do not want to disturb this substrate system. Look at that, looking good, right? As a centerpiece on a table or something like that at home, I think that works so well. So it's now the next day and the vase is a little bit misty. Now don't worry, this is completely normal for any new aquarium, but the beauty of having a small vase like this means we can just do 100% water change it really quickly. Now you need to make sure that you're filling your vase or bowl or whatever you're using with dechlorinated tap water. So over here, I've got a whole big bucket or tub or whatever it's called. What's it? We call it a water butt in the UK, and it is filled with water all the time. And then I add my uh, dechlorinator to it. I use Acre Essential from API. And then there's just a pump inside that pumps it down into this reel. And then I've got on the other side of the reel, this little sort of inlet for a filter, a little ball valve on it. Perfect. Obviously that's normally reeled up nicely, but we're filling stuff, aren't we? Now you could just keep your bowl like this if you wanted to and just enjoy the plants growing, or you could add some inhabitants. Now that's what I want to do, but I kind of want to seed the tank first. I'm going to put some um, botanicals in there that's in some other tanks that have loads of microfauna and everything like that and just get 
loads of sort of bacterial growth and things and I'm just saying words now. <laughs> so I've got some awesome botanicals in this tank which will be really useful. They've been in there a few weeks now so a couple of these leaves and twigs will really sort of kickstart the cycling if you like, the population, the microfauna and just get everything moving in the right direction. If you don't have things like this it has been said that you can go to like local waterways and just pick up some gunk and something like that and stick it in your tank just to get things going. Okay, sweet, we're ready to add some critters. So this is my shrimp tank. I'm gonna be adding some of the snails. As you can see, there's an absolute ton of them in here. There's lots of shrimp as well, but um, yeah, I just want the snails from this one. And then this tank here, the shrimp owls, um, it's actually being used to grow up some fry. There we go, look, there's the, there's the fry, rainbow fry that is. Well, I'm gonna take some of the uh, shrimp out of here and add them into the vase. There's a good group in there actually, sort of dotted around everywhere. Now, one of the great things about vases like this, small tanks, you can just pick them up and move them. So I'm gonna place mine under here just for the time being so we can get a nice little sort of final shot for it. Like I say, a nice little group here. Now, some people don't like snails at all in their tanks, but for me, they're an absolutely essential part of an ecosystem. And then we've got seven shrimp as well. Whee. <laughs> Some of the snails are just floating at the moment just because they've got a little bit of air trapped in them. Just where we've taken them out of water, but they'll sink in a minute and be absolutely fine. Yeah, look at some of these getting to work already. Shrimp and snails. And you'll notice that basically all of my tanks have snails in. Because I consider them such an important part of every ecosystem, they basically break down a lot of the waste produced by any fish and shrimp as well. And eventually it makes its way down into that substrate system and provides even more nutrients for all the plants. Any decaying leaf matter, plant matter, anything really, they're gonna chew it up and it will just make its way down. More lockdown nutrients and that means more growth. And providing you don't overfeed the tank, the numbers of the snails will stay sort of steady. They do multiply quite fast, but only if there's a ton of waste for them to feast on. Okay, so how much is the right amount of food for a, a vase this size? So I've got my flake here and this will be the right amount of food, no, too much, for this whole tank. Look at that, just a tiny little bit plonk it at the top, that's enough. Literally just that, and that's gonna provide enough food for the shrimp and the snails. Now, if I was gonna keep the tank here under this bright light, I'd also add a few floating plants like that as well. They'll multiply, pull nutrients out to grow, and just balance everything even better. But to be honest, after I finish the video, I'm gonna move this tank into the middle section. Over in this section here, so it'll just be receiving sort of normal sunlight coming from the outside window. In fact, why don't I just do it now? There we go, so this is now far more of a representation of what you guys could possibly be doing at home and you haven't got a big aquarium light sat above it. So what do we need to do in terms of aftercare then? Well, it's quite simple really. Given the fact that there's such a low bio load on the tank, I keep saying tank, I mean fast, but I suppose it's still a tank, it's a vessel of water. Yeah, given the fact there's such a low bio load on the tank, it's very unlikely you'll get any spikes in ammonia or nitrite. But just to be sure, I'm gonna be changing 50% of the water with the chlorinated tap water every day. I'll do this for about a week and then I'll start to reduce it by half again, so 25%. I mean, it's so easy to do in something this size. It just makes sense to not take any risk and just do it. It also means there's less chance of any algae buildup just while the plants are all settling in. Once their root systems are fully established, they'll be flying anyway and there'll be very little chance of any algae in a bowl like this that hasn't got a big light above it. Now, if you wanna add a fertilizer to the tank, a liquid fertilizer, you can. I just wouldn't do it straight away. It's not like we've got fast growing stems. Once those roots are established, they're gonna get all those nutrients from the substrate. I'd probably wait a week before I add in any liquid fertilizers. These plants aren't horrendously fast growing. 
they need some time to settle. And remember, keep that feeding to a minimal like I showed you. You probably only need to do that every other day. It's not the only food source for the snails and shrimp, remember. They'll also be grazing constantly on any of the plants that aren't doing perfectly well. Little bits of degrading plant matter and those botanicals that we've got in there. Now, what about water changes? Well, after about three to four weeks, the tank will be completely stabilized. At this point, it'll just be topping up the water that's evaporated and you can just sit back and enjoy. So I'll keep this one here, keep you guys updated with future videos. Make sure you've liked and subscribed and put the all thingy so that you get the updates. You know how YouTube works, I'll see you on the next one.